All right, guys, in this short video, I'm just going to go over the UV path tool inside of 3D Coat. Um, it's a pretty amazing tool, uh, and uh, I use it all the time. But I did want to show you um, a use case where maybe you have a, where you have a triangulated mesh, and uh, it's pretty messy and may not work really well with trying to find edge loops. If we just go to the UV section here, and if we try to find edge loops, you can see that they're really erratic and they're just going to term terminate fairly quickly because there's just so many um, edges that are offshoots of each other. So you can't really use this to try to break this mesh up in any particular way. Uh, and let's just say you're not going to retopologize this for any reason. I just want to show you the power of the UV path tool. So uh, why don't we go ahead and get started. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is I have the teeth as a separate uh, UV layer. So for example, if I switch over to teeth, you'll just see they're not UV'd either. Um, I'm not going to UV them here. There's just too many single pieces. It'd just be a waste of your time. So what I'm going to do is just kind of run through how you uh, use the tool on the head, and then you can apply that exact same treatment to the teeth. So I'll just go ahead and hide the teeth for now. Excellent. The way the UV path tool works is you just define points, and then 3D Coat is going to connect those points. It's going to find like the shortest or best route or path that it can to connect the points that you're trying to connect. So for example, what I'm going to do is separate this inner mouth from the head. So I'll just drop an initial point here and you'll see this purple point. And now if I click anywhere, it's going to try to find the shortest path to connect that. So now what I want to do is kind of just place it around the area that I want to uh, start to separate or define it as a, as a uh, UV path. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue right around this path, like so. Doesn't have to be perfect. All I want to do is create a minimal number of islands so I can paint that. I'm not a fan of a bunch of fragmented islands, even though it's okay sometimes when you're um, painting, but uh, I really do like to have some kind of organization in my islands, because sometimes I might want to jump on um, the 2D space and do some of the painting there, or send it to Photoshop or something like that. So it gives me the flexibility and it allows me to find errors um, as I'm, uh, as because I can see what, what's going on in the 2D space. Also for occlusion, I just want to make sure that I'm getting the resolution I need. All right, so what I've done is I've tracked this entire path, and at the very end, I, I uh, close it by clicking over the original starting point. So you see it's turned yellow now. And I'll just hit Enter, and now that, that creates the cut. So now my seam has been defined and cut. So I've se just separated the inner mouth. I'll go ahead and separate the tongue as well. So we'll do the same thing. And with the tongue, I'm just going to try to define an area that's really close to it, because if I want to do any kind of a flood fill, um, it actually feels like it's a separate object and uh, just not going to be a really messy or get contaminated by other areas of the mouth. This tool is super handy. The nice thing about it is, uh, you see how I, I picked that starting point? I could now move it and um, you know readjust these points. So any of these points, I can just click on them and make some adjustments if I feel like they need it. So that's pretty powerful. Now I've got this loop around the tongue. I'll just go ahead and hit Enter. And now I've just defined a UV island for that tongue. So we're just about done here. I'll do another really quick one. Um, oh, one thing to note, you see when you're done, after you hit enter and you create that seam, it leaves that uh, pink dot and it thinks you want to continue from there. So if I wanted to start working up here, you'll see that it actually created a path to try to get there, which is not what I want to do. So I'll just hit escape and that clears the buffer. And now I can start again. So I'll just go ahead and click up here and find a path right along 
this side here. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I end it right on a seam that I've cut like that. And I'll hit enter. I've just defined the cut, but it did not separate the island because I want to, I have to close it. So I'm going to go ahead and continue from here. Now I can see that I have that pink one just through, um, it's nice that it actually shows you through the mesh. So I'll just uh, hit escape and now I can click on a point here and again, define this path. I think I'm going to go around this way and then come in and connect it. Now when I hit enter, I've separated the top part of the head and now I'll do the lower jaw again, escape to start with a, a fresh um, point and now I will just start following like more of that like natural natural seam and flow so I'm just going to separate that lower jaw there we go and I'll wrap that all the way around And so if it starts going wide and a little weird, just kind of click a little closer to your original point, it'll find another path. And then now I can get closer to where I'm trying to get to. There we go. And connect it to the edge and hit enter. And now I've just separated the lower jaw. All that's left now is to detach this end piece. Again, escape to clear the uh, point buffer and just start dropping points. Kind of, again, if it starts taking a weird route, you can always readjust, um, you can always readjust that. Sorry, my voice is kind of um, coming in and out. There we go. And close it. And uh, actually, before I cut it, Maybe I want to make an adjustment so I can, I don't have a point right here, but I can click one here and create one. So now I can readjust my path. Maybe something like that. And now I'll hit enter. Perfect. And finally, I'll just split this uh, so I can unwrap it. So I'll go ahead and start off the cut edge already. There we go. And see if I can get a nice straight cut. Actually, that's not bad. I'll go ahead and split that. And in theory, I should have all the islands in nice big chunks and unwrapped. So let's go ahead and unwrap our mesh. There we go. And it's already packed, but I'll just go ahead and repack anyway. Perfect. So now we can see our, uh, our mesh looks pretty good, actually. Checkerboard is nice, even. I don't see any really big, big or major kind of stretching that I'd be really concerned about. And, uh, you know, from here, what I like to do is I like to run an occlusion render. Just kind of really helps me see like, did it, did it have enough resolution to bake? Did I, did I, um, do I need to make larger islands? You know things like that so this is for me it's a, just a nice check i think it's taken a little while because it's a fairly dense and um, messy messy mesh but uh, it should be fine let's see there we go i'll hit okay and i'll jump into the paint room we go and then just let's hide the wireframe perfect so if I hide the ambient occlusion and apply it looks great in fact let's make it a little heavier I'll go ahead and make it three times that just to make sure Yeah, it looks pretty good. 
So now I've got a UV mesh. I can take a look at the UVs themselves and see how it baked. And it looked like it did a nice clean job. This is a 2K map, by the way. So that's fine for islands of this size. It will be fine. But if you need more detail, you can always bump that up to 4K. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. And um, now really, I use this tool all the time. The cleaner the mesh, the nicer it is to just like define those edges. I normally use the edge loop. But uh, sometimes I need to get creative on how I want to separate some of these um, sections. And I do find that the UV path is, is an excellent choice. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you um, found this useful. Bye.